Remember Quake Collision Halls? How the game expands the world to make bounding box collisions as simple as point collisions? Wouldn't it be great if we could visualise this parallel universe in-game? In this video we'll do exactly that. It won't be easy, so on the way we'll take a detour through the Quake map compiler. In the end we'll explore this hidden world and discover some little known secrets in the original maps. It's been a while, so if you don't recall, Quake performs collisions with the player's bounding box by expanding the map's brushes in a very particular way. Whenever the player's origin intersects this collision hall, part of the player's bounding box intersects the unexpanded world. The hull is stored in the map as a BSP tree, a recursive division of 3D space. Each internal node of the tree represents a subset of the space that is divided in two by a splitting plane to give two further nodes of the tree. At the tips of the tree, we find leaves, that is, nodes that have no children. Each leaf is labelled as either solid or empty. While this structure is convenient for doing the line traces required by collision detection, it is not easy to draw as a collection of polygons, which we require to render easily. This isn't an easy problem to solve, so let's lean on someone else's code and dive into the Quake map compiler, specifically the portalizer. Quake's hidden surface determination code uses a pre-calculated leaf-to-leaf visibility matrix. This is built up using a portal graph data structure. This structure connects adjacent empty leaves by their adjoining polygons, the regions where leaves touch. For details on how this is used to determine visibility, check out my previous video. But right now we're going to take a look at how the portal graph is generated, and hack it up to produce our boundary mesh instead. Let's look at this simple map that consists of an octagonal tunnel with a 90 degree bend. The bulk of the portalizing routine calculates a graph of all leaves, solid and empty. Each leaf ends up with a collection of polygons associated with it that describe its boundary, with polygons being shared by touching leaves. As with most BSP algorithms, portalization operates recursively. We start off with a large cuboid that contains the entire space. This space is split in two by the root node splitting plane. Each child is then split by its splitting plane, and so on, until only leaves remain. Seeing the whole thing at once is kind of busy, even on this small map, so let's just follow one path. At each step, any polygons wholly in front of the splitting plane are moved to the first child, and any polygons wholly behind are moved to the second child. Any polygons that straddle the plane are split into two, with each half being added to the appropriate child. A new polygon is added to both children corresponding with the intersection of the splitting plane with the node. Since polygons are shared by adjacent nodes, every time we split a polygon, it is split for each connected node. For example, let's look at the same walk as before, only this time showing the second child of the root node. It might seem redundant to have all these coplanar polygons, but it means that at each step of the algorithm, each polygon touches exactly two unsplit nodes. And each unsplit node has a set of polygons describing its surface. Once all the nodes have been split into leaves, we end up with a full set of polygons that cover the boundary of each leaf, and we also know the node on the other side of each polygon. For the portal graph, polygons that aren't between two empty leaves are thrown out. For our purposes, we keep the polygons that lie between solid and empty nodes.
Getting this into the game is a case of copying the relevant code from the mapping tools into the engine and adapting the tree data structure to match the format seen at runtime. The polygons it emits are then uploaded to the graphics card and rendered with a nice looking fragment shader. Let's explore this parallel universe a bit. Everything seems a lot more cramped, but it is exactly as constrained as the normal world. The difference is we are now a point and not a box. It's now immediately obvious where there are gaps we can travel through and where things are blocked. Brush-based entities such as doors have their own BSP trees which we can also draw using the exact same method. The engine treats other models as bounding boxes for the purposes of collisions, which it constructs a temporary hull for. We can draw these too, which makes it very clear when a passage is blocked or when there is a gap. Here's a weird spot. There's a little lip under here that doesn't correspond with the original geometry. This is in fact a bug in the original map compiler's expanding code. The bug was fixed in community ports of the map compiler at least as long ago as 2007, and the ledge itself has been found by speedrunners, but this is the first time I've actually seen it. As far as I know this ledge isn't useful for anything. There are other places where the bug manifests itself. For example, if you've ever found yourself bumping your head in this corridor, now you know why. I hope you've enjoyed this dive into Quake's Portalizer and the exploration of its collision halls. I've left a link to the source code in the description, but beware it is a bit rough around the edges. Let me know if you think this would be a handy feature to have in the game. As always, thanks for watching.